Welcome to the Vestralia South Dundas Council meeting with his team and staff team for Tuesday, May the 23rd, 2023. I'd like to start the meeting off by having a motion that it resolved that the meeting of the council for May 23rd, 2023 of South Dundas now be opened at 6 p.m. Moved by Councillor Ward, seconded by Councillor Vino. All in favor? Carried. Second motion, as we have the agenda here, it's been posted. I have a motion be resolved that the Council of Municipality of South Dundas approve the agenda as presented, unless there are any errors or omissions we would like to make. Seeing none, a motion, Councillor Smith, seconded by Councillor Ward. All in favor? Carried. Item number three, disclosure of pecuniary interests and the general nature thereof. Seeing none, move to item four, adoption of minutes. Let it be resolved that the minutes of the following meetings, including closed session, be adopted as circulated. Our meeting of May 8th, 2023. Motion by Councillor Smith, seconded by Councillor Ward. All in favor? <coughs> Carried. Thank you very much. Okay, we're moving on to item number five, delegation. So we have Jamie Pollock here tonight from MNP Financial to discuss our financial statements. Welcome, Jamie. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming. Well, thank you very much, uh, Your Worship. Uh, I think most people know who I am. Is this on? But uh, <laughs> I'm Jamie Pollock. I'm a charter professional accountant and partner with MNP, and I've been with the firm and the preceding firm before that for a total of 23 years now. And I've been involved with this audit for those 23 years. So I have a lot of history with the municipality, and, and I'm originally from uh, South Dundas, just on the, on the south side of Winchester Springs. That's where I kind of grew up. So I'm on the the good side, I guess you want to argue, but both townships are great, and I'm happy to be here tonight to go through the draft financial statements. If there's any questions or concerns at any time, please stop me, and I'll be happy to uh, answer uh, any of your questions or concerns that you may have. There's a few documents that's in your package tonight, but I'll just keep it very high level. But like I said, just stop me if there's something I don't go over or you have any questions on. We do have at the start, which I go back, is your analysis of your operating surplus, which I'll go back in a, in a few minutes. If we go through the financial statements, we go to the independent auditor's report. So with all the documents that you see, technically you pay us for two pages of paper, and it's these two pa pages right here. So it's probably the most two expensive paper costs for paper that you see, but they're important. And I won't go through the whole report, but I'll just go through the first two paragraphs with you. Um, and it's addressed to the members of council, the inhabitants and ratepayers of the corporation of the municipality of South Dundas. We have audited the financial statements of the corporation of the municipality of South Dundas, which comprised the statement of financial position as of D December 31st, 2022, in the statements of operations, accumulated surplus, changes in net debt and cash flows for the year then ended and notes to the financial statements including the summary of significant accounting policies in our opinion the accompanying financial statements presents fairly in all material respects the financial position of the municipality as of december 31st 2022 and the results of its operations changes in net debt and its cash flows for the year then ended in accordance with canadian public sector accounting standards so it's a clean audit opinion. Uh, that's what you want to hear from us as your auditors referring to the financial uh, statements. While we do assess administration in putting these financial statements together, ultimately it's their responsibility for the financial information being presented. Our responsibility is to audit uh, the, the, the figures in these financial statements. So it kind of outlines the responsibility of management and those charged with governance for the financial statements, which, is, which are you, and then there's our responsibilities for the audit of the financial statements, which goes on to the second page and kind of outlines uh, our responsibilities, of course, but some limitations as well of what we do. 
Uh, it is in draft format, but once it's approved by council with you, because you're charged with governance, we are in a position to sign our auditor's report to go with these financial statements. If we turn to uh, the next couple pages, we have the consolidated statement of financial position or your balance sheet. And it, it is at a particular point in time. It is at December 31st, 2022. So the, the numbers that's here on that date could be totally different as of, of now, but we're reporting at December 31st, 2022. When you look at your total assets, it's, uh, that's considered financial assets, 15.2 million compared to 15.8 million, a decrease of about uh, $650,000 for the year. And the biggest drop is in cash, as cash was used to help pay down uh, some of the debt and tangible capital assets in the year. Taxes receivable, just over $1 million. Accounts receivable, which is your HST rebate receivable, user fees, amounts owing from Rideau St. Lawrence Utilities for water and sewer collections, and mainly grant uh, revenue uh, is 4.8 million compared to 2.6 million. Your long-term investments slightly down, but that is actually a good thing because you're collecting on the growth loan uh, levy from new rate payers on the water and sewer system. So as that gets payment, that amounts go down. And then a small change in the investment in Rito St. Lawrence Holdings at the end of the year at 1.9 million. Under liabilities, we have $15.7 million compared to 16.3 million from the previous year, an increase of 1.4 million. Accounts payable, which is mainly trade payables, and that's really timing. That balance is 1.9 compared to 1.8. Um, the biggest drop is in deferred revenue, obligatory reserve funds, and it's shown as a liability, but you might consider it as a reserve fund, but that is your gas tax uh, funds that, that you have uh, mainly, and you utilize those funds in the year. So you had 800000 at the end of 2021, you received 343000 in gas tax funding, and you utilize $830,000 to offset tangible capital assets or capital road work in the year. So that balance went down and that explains why your cash went down is that you're utilizing those funds that you had received in previous years for current year expenditures. Municipal debt, 8.3 million compared to 8.8 .8 million. It's down mainly for regular payments in the year, but you did take on one new loan for the Taylor Bridge work project of $333,000. And the crude landfill closure and post-closure costs, it goes up, but it goes up every year as you use your landfill site uh, that's located in Matilda, plus there's monitoring costs for the Williamsburg site that is accrued and it kind of uh, gets drawn down as, uh, as each year that you monitor that landfill site. So we have net debt of 567000 compared to $483,000. But it's not something I want you to get really worried about because a lot of the liabilities are not really due this year. They're due in the future, like landfill closure and post-closure costs. It's a liability of what happens if we have to close the site today and the same with uh, finish looking after Williamsburg. We know there's always something, uh, a lot of, not a lot of issues, but Matilda, you know, with a few years left on its site, what will it cost to close that site and the monitoring costs? And of course, long-term debt, the municipal debt, that's the value of all the debt that's outstanding, not necessarily due in one year. So another way of looking at that, if you cash out all your assets and then pay down all your liabilities, even before you consider tangible capital assets, you will be short by $567,000. But that only happens if, if everything had to be closed up shop you know, today. You know, for the municipal, uh, for the municipality. If we go to non-financial assets, we have tangible capital assets, and this is recorded at net book value for accounting purposes. Is 109.9 million compared to 105.2 million. 
So this takes in all your land, your building, your water and sewer systems, your road infrastructure, storm sewer, water and plant filtration plants, uh, buildings like the arena, recreation equipment. And like I said, it's recorded at cost less accumulated amortization. It doesn't necessarily reflect your fair market value or your replacement value, but at what's recorded on the financial statements under PSAS purposes. And then we have inventory, which is mainly your salt and sand that's on hand at the end of December. So total accumulated surplus, uh, 109.5 million compared to 104.8 million, overall increase of five point, uh, about five point million, uh, which is good, but that's more of the investment in your infrastructure assets during the year. So it's not the surplus you can go out and spend today, it's, that's, it's just the sum of your all your total assets, less your liabilities at December 31st. If we turn to the next page, uh, this is the consolidated statement of financial activities or your income statement for the full year ended December 31st, 2022. If you look at the middle column, we have total revenue for the year of $14.8 million compared to budget of $14.4 million. So you're to the good of about $400,000. Expenses, $15.9 million compared to $15.1 million. Uh, you're over budget. Uh, it looks like on paper by $700,000, but the expenses include items like amortization expense and the change in the future closure costs for the landfill site. Um, other revenue for capital purposes, we have deferred revenue earned, uh, grants, uh, direct billings, donations and contributions from developers and found assets, less any disposal of assets for 5.7. So for public sector accounting purposes, on, I'm gonna say on paper, because we have to report it like this, your annual surplus is 4.7 million dollars for the year compared to a budget of 278 and prior year of 2.3 million. If we just turn the page one more time, like I said, if we go to the statement of changes in net debt, we take that surplus in the middle column of 4.6 million dollars. We add back amortization expense because it's a non-cash item, so we're amortizing all your tangible capital lots assets over its useful life, 3.7 million. Then we deduct your acquisition of tangible capital assets, $8.7 million, and add back loss on disposal of tangible capital assets. We have a kind of an increase in your net debt of about $83,000. So that's kind of more realistic of what the cash flow was for the year for the municipality when it comes to the income statement, less the acquisition of tangible capital assets. And one thing that PSAS statements do not show at all is actually your payments on your long-term debt as an expense. It's shown in other areas on the financial statements, but it does not show as an expense on the financial statements. If we go back, and I believe it's in your handouts here, is the analysis of the operating surplus. So and I'll just go back to the the first page here, because you might be thinking, well, these numbers don't quite make sense to me. How the heck are we having a surplus of 4.7 million? And I thought uh, that doesn't seem realistic to me, Mr. Auditor. And I thought we had a balanced budget for the year, and I don't see that in the financial statements either. So that's why we prepare this one page summary uh, for you, and it kind of explains where you're actual to budget. So we took items out that is PSAS related which is mainly amortization expense, interest on reserve funds. That's nothing to do with your operating budget. So this is just for operating purposes. So if we go through the middle column again under revenue, total revenue 14.7 million, you're ahead to the good by $240,000. And you had positive variances and extra revenue in each line item, uh, taxes, lower write-offs than budgeted, higher recreation revenue for fees and service charges, higher water uh, waste diversion in, uh, in re recreation grants in the year of 30,000, higher investment income than budgeted 62. 
a thousand and do, and then donations that come come in for various recreation projects not budgeted for of sixty one thousand nine hundred dollars under expenditures um, general government one point nine million fifty one thousand to the good for less professional fees materials and services uh, protections to persons and property less emergency management costs required and savings and salaries created savings of two hundred and sixty two thousand dollars there was overage in transportation services in the year of $192,000. While there was savings in salaries and benefits, there was higher fuel and repairs and maintenance costs in the year. Environmental services, uh, $3.8 million, $142,000 more than budget, but we have that piece uh, adjustment for landfill closure costs of $352,000. You back that out, you actually had savings environmental services, which is recycling, landfill, water and sewer, uh, which you have savings in, in water and sewer repairs for the year to the good of almost uh, t by $210,000 for the year. So, and you will see that down the bottom that with those savings in water and sewer, you actually had a surplus for your water and sewer systems for the year. And I'm, I can say that as we finish going through this, you also will see that we have a surplus for operating purposes in the year at the bottom of $224,469. As we kind of finish going through uh, the spreadsheet, health services, there was no recruitment for doctors in the current year, so there were savings there. Recreation and cultural services was higher due to higher capital repairs and maintenance than budgeted and then savings and plan and development. With the timing of uh, when capital projects gets completed and financing of those capital projects, we do have some more extra funds going into the reserves and reserve funds, but that's because of the timing of the capital projects, but there was savings in going through capital funds instead. So with the less operating dollars required for capital fund they were parked into reserves and reserve funds instead and uh, municipal debt payments it was higher than budget by fifty six thousand dollars so if we go to kind of the third line from the bottom we have change in your operating fund balance for the year of six hundred and seventy eight thousand dollars as indicated it's split into two parts um, the last part two hundred and twenty four thousand that is your operating surplus for the year and 128,587 of that was uh, transferred to your working capital reserve as uh, pursuant to your bylaw, your tax law law that gets passed each year. And 95,882 oh, 95, was placed into your fire rescue reserve fund and that's because of the savings and the management, uh, emergency management costs in the year. Uh, the water and sewer, sewer surplus for the year was 454,433 and that's broken down between kind of the four main uh, operating systems that you have. The South Dundas water had a surplus of $68,500 approximately. The Airqua sewer system, 83,463. The Morrisburg sewer system, uh, 295,162 and the Williamsburg sewer system, $7,290. So surplus is kind of all around for 2022. So I can say here, you know, positively says that you had a good year. You know, you exceeded budget, had overall surplus in that of 678,000 between the water and sewer and the operating. And when you balance for zero, anything above zero is, is positive. And that is the surplus, mainly from revenues and some savings and expenditures. And, and as I said, uh, according to your bylaw, that has automatically be placed into your reserves and your reserve funds at December 31st, 2022. I'm just going to go back to the financial statements, but I won't go through um, much of the details, but just some other highlights. If we kind of go to where it says page, just go back. page five, we have your consolidated schedule of tangible capital asset by asset type. 
And the one number I'd like to bring your attention to is the second column from the uh, right, right hand side, 2022. Uh, second last line, we see net book value of those assets, 109.9 million. When you compare to the total cost of those assets, which is well, four lines up, $150 million, your net book value is 73% of that, which means you still have about three quarters of, its, of your overall useful life of your assets to utilize before the required replacement. Now it, it varies, but when you look at all the work that's been done in the municipality in the last 15 years, it, it makes sense with, with you know, the renovations to this building, uh, upgrades to the Airqua sewer system, the new water plant system, the work at the arena, and all the roads that was you know, paved over, repaved because of the gas tax and bridges, a lot of investment has been done. So that's why you still have a lot of useful life left in those assets. Page six is the same, somewhat the same schedule, but broken down by segment. That's between general government protection services. Of course, majority of the assets is under transportation for your roads and bridges and major equipment and environmental services uh, for your water and wastewater uh, systems. Uh, this is a breakdown of your schedule of your accumulated surplus. We have some surplus for the Morrisburg Business Improvement Area, 68,467 carry for from previous year. We have a small capital surplus or carry forward of 75,000 investment in Rideau St. Lawrence, 1.9 million. And we have some liabilities that has to be recovered from future revenues uh, when they do become, come due. So we have kind of a net operating deficit of $4.7 million, but your operating surplus from year to year is the top line, which is zero, because any surpluses goes to the reserves. And the same with the water and sewer surplus. So we have reserves and reserve funds in the middle, uh, 7.3 in reserves and 3.6 million for reserve funds. Overall, a small decrease of $36,300 in the year of, of reserves and reserve funds. And then invested in tangible capital assets is 109 million your net book value of your assets less the debt to come up with your accumulated surplus. I will go uh, in a few minutes touch on the reserves and reserve funds in a little bit more detail. Now if everyone has trouble sleeping tonight we have a number of pages of financial notes that you can read at your leisure. Uh, some of it is exciting to some people, like you can tell how I am, but others, who needs a lullaby when you got these financial statements to go through? But like I said, they're important, so but, so I won't uh, spare the, uh, your time with, with that. If we go to note two, which is at the bottom, It's hard to tell, but I'll go on page 15. The long-term investments is broken down with your promissory note with Rideau St. Lawrence. You don't see it on that screen because it's at the bottom, 938, plus some debentures receivable uh, for your water and sewer and your growth, uh, growth loan levy, which totals just over a million dollars on that. The next page is your investment in Rideau St. Lawrence Holdings. Your share of the net income for the year was $50,900. You did receive dividends in the year, but you receive it as income. It's actually a reduction in your overall investment and it was higher than the income in the year, not by much. So that's why the overall value has gone down, but it's just a kind of one year uh, blimp uh, this case this time around. If we turn to note, uh, page 17, note four, this is deferred revenue. And the majority balance is the green infrastructure fund, $381,000 is still not spent. That's the provincial portion of the program. And I believe that program is almost wrapped up where once you receive the remaining federal government funds, these funds will be utilized into, into income. 
the old star it's along that relates to the south dundas water plant when it was built that remaining funds are now utilized and then ocif there's a small balance of 4908 deferred revenue obligatory reserve funds as i talked about the middle column the gas tax started off 512,000 you receive your annual share of 343,000 less 830,000 which was utilized to offset uh, capital uh, work in the year for for bridges and roadways so you have a closing balance of $38,000 we have a little bit left over of COVID money received not spent 59 and then 194,800 parked in your huh, parked in your parkland reserve fund Uh, page 18 is a breakdown of all your uh, municipal debt, uh, what's outstanding from one year to the other. As previously indicated, it all went down based on normal payments. The only one that is new is the second last one on that list, which is the new loan for the Taylor Road Bridge for $332,000. The next part, you see the payments over the next five years. The principal portion, so $816,000 is required to be paid in 2023 in roughly the same amounts over the next five years. Um, the bottom, the part there under uh, operating surplus, it kind of shows where we get from the financial statement all the way down to a balanced budget for the year, which is like the fourth line from the bottom, and your overall surplus that we kind of went through there a few minutes ago on that one-page summary, uh, and that split between water and surplus. So that one-page summary kind of ties into that to say, okay, where does that 4.7 million gets allocated? And it kind of shows you how that gets allocated accordingly. Like we add back amortization and the transfers to reserves, the acquisition of tangible capital assets, the pay down of long term debt. This is where it's presented here the $810,000. We add back the PSAS items, and then we have your overall surplus of 678902 that's split between surplus and water and sewer, uh, operating surplus and water and sewer. Uh, Page 20, as indicated, those are the amounts in the top part where the water and sewer surplus is allocated by each uh, operating system for the year. If we go to page 22, this is the uh, schedule of your reserves and reserve funds. Your total reserves at December 31st, 2022, 7.4 million compared to 7.2 million. So you're up by a hundred and uh, almost, uh, just almost a hundred thousand dollars from the previous year. Reserves and reserve and the reserve funds, three point six million, a slight decrease of about a hundred thousand uh, dollars from the previous year, and and that's because of the use of the infrastructure reserve fund for capital project. Overall, your total is. 10.9 million compared to 11 million the previous year, a decrease of only $36,000 net from one year to the other. Well, we have uh, at the back of the financial statements kind of a five year financial review shows the the the, the revenue uh, trend in the, you know, of course over those years and same with expenses a couple things you quite can't see down at the bottom is the property taxes how that has raised from 2018 to 2022 it has increased on an annualized basis of 3.25 percent which kind of matches inflation up you know really up to 2022 before we get into 2023 so your the mon amount of revenue being billed is matching kind of the inflation of your costs and that's what we expect your administration to do to make sure money is being raised to cover off the inflation costs of expenses incurred um, when we look at taxable assessment uh, going from 2018 to 2020 
Two, that has also grown by 3.85% annualized over the five years. So what that tells me is that the extra revenue that you've received through billing of taxation revenue is due because of assessment and growth in your assessment and not necessarily the municipality setting higher tax rates. You know, it's coming from the growth in your taxable assessment over those five years. We have financial indica in indicators. Uh, a couple of things that kind of jumps out with me and. Uh, one is the percentage of your own tax lev taxes receivable levy compared to your own levies, 13%. Uh, it was 10% the previous year, and of your total levy, 5%. Municipal debt, 8.3 million, and long-term debt charges is just over a million. When we look under kind of ratios such as sustainability, financial assets to liabilities is just almost one to one. When you take out the long-term debt, it's about 1.77 to 1, and that's good because that's your working capital ratio, and if anyone's in business, your assets to liabilities, the, the golden rule of thumb is 2 to 1. So for a municipality being at just under 2.1 uh, to 1, that is a good ratio to have. Long-term debt to tangible capital assets, 7.5%. That's a good number to be in. I think anything under 10% is good. When you start going over 10%, that's when you might uh, start create some financial risk. And that's kind of the same when it comes to your debt charges to your total operating revenue. That's 7.3 million. They've always been kind of at that level. And the amount of operating revenue to tax taxable assessment, 8.4%. Uh, so. But the debt charges below 10%, that's a good uh, figure to have. Operating grants to operating revenues, 10.5%. Uh, except for 2018, the trend is going downward, and that's what we expected, that there's going to be less grants being received by the municipality uh, from the upper levels of, of government, and it will be up to the municipality to raise more of your own dollars through taxation or user fees to help pay for um, operating expenditures. Uh, total grants to total revenues and went up a little bit this year, but most of the time it has been below 20%. <coughs> of course, the one part I'd like to show is <laughs> it's not there, but it's at the bottom part. And it's just the reserve coverage that you have. As indicated, your total reserves is 7.4 million. Uh, the, the amount of reserves to operating expenses is 46%. We always have mentioned to councils that we'd like to see that anywhere between 25 and you know 40 percent, 50 percent is a very good number to have. South Dundas has always been on the high end, indicating that you always have plenty of reserves compared to your operating expenditures. When you just look at your working capital reserve, your closing balance is just over two million dollars. Uh, it's been the highest in the last five years. When you compare that working capital res balance just to your operating reserves, because all the other reserves are kind of spoken for, it's 13%. And we always like to see that between 10 and 15%. So your rate in line on where we expect your working uh, capital reserve to be. So when I look at these ratios, you are in very good financial shape uh, with the amount of reserves and reserve funds that you have your working capital reserve uh, that you have compared to your operating expenses and your amount of financial assets to liabilities, uh, you're well positioned with that. And your long-term debt, yes, you have $8.3 million in debt, but it's not an alarming number that you have, that you still have quite a bit of flexibility if you choose to, to take on more debt because we like to see long-term debt compared to tangible capital assets to be always below 10% or your operating revenue of 10% and you both are, both ratios are like that for the last five years and still at December 31st, 2022. So that is the financial report. Uh, you had a good year. You had an operating surplus of $224,000 plus water and sewer surplus of 454,000. They got automatically placed into your reserves and reserve funds and you're in very good financial shape. Thank you. Thank you. Jamie, thank you very much.
Excellent. That's a lot of details for us uh, yeah. to and take that's in. that's on a high level. Uh, of, course. <laughs> of course. Well, and uh, I'll start off with uh, by, by thanking you and uh, MNP for, for doing the, uh, the audit and, and, and working with our team. Uh, first of all, I want to thank, you know, uh, 2022, our acting treasurer was Lachlan McDonald and uh, uh, certainly our deputy treasurer, uh, Sean Mason, and the, and the rest of the team, Tyler Nelson, asset management, uh, Greg DeDecker, accounts payable, Amanda Alexander, uh, taxation utilities, really the team, the five uh, folks that work in our you know, treasury department, they're certainly responsible for making sure all of these items are tracked properly and, and uh, applied for, and, um, and then obviously giving, uh, giving Jamie, you and your team, uh, the right data to uh, complete the audit. So first of all, I want to, want to thank them. Uh, oh, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for that. Obviously, we, we have a new treasurer, Jewel. Uh, Julie Stewart's here, so she'll be uh, leading the, the Treasury Group for 2023, so uh, hoping that uh, our audit uh, continues to be successful. A uh, couple, couple comments um, that I'll make, and then I'll open it up to if, if you have any questions. Uh, certainly, you, you can see uh, on the growth chart, uh, the five-year plan, that growth continues to be important, and we continue to talk about economic development and things we can do uh, to raise that taxation base, which helps us in, in a lot of areas. Very interesting to note that we're going to pay down that uh, 816,000 debt this year, and we haven't uh, taken on any. We haven't, uh, you know, haven't taken on any. So that's going to put us in a good position because over the last couple of years, we uh, kept uh, acquiring some debt. So that'll be interesting to see how we play that going going forward. Um, Otherwise, uh, I appreciate everything, and I'll open it up to the floor for uh, for any other questions or comments by, by my team. Extremely well done. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, certainly. I think uh, obviously for our first time, uh, as we're learning all the uh, the ins and outs, uh, uh, I'm sure we'll continue to have questions. And I know we're we're looking to have some internal uh, updates with our own group to see where we're at, and these will help guide us guide us on that. So. Uh, Without any further questions, thank you very much, Amy, for coming tonight. And uh, I have some uh, more reading to to material okay. for tonight. Thank you. And I just like to, of course, uh, thank uh, Sean and Lachlan and, and Tyler for all their cooperation uh, during the audit. And I'm looking forward to working with Julie. I worked with Julie before, actually, at another municipality which we were auditors for. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I know he's not here tonight, but I wish Shannon Garrity all the best of luck at his new uh, place of employment at the Township of Augusta. He's been involved basically with the financial records when he came on as almost deputy treasurer, treasurer 15 or 16 years ago. So obviously he still had a hand in, in these financial figures for 2022. So I thank everybody as well and of course with Tyler as well with the tangible capital assets that's uh, not an easy beast uh, to deal with as well and uh, I remember 15 years ago tangible capital assets were not even on the financial statements so now they so now they are to be uh, monitored um, and I just don't want to quite leave yet without giving uh, kind of a report card on where some recommendations may could be made by administration staff and I reviewed these recommendations already with, with them, and it's uh, it was it's in the, your package handed out. And like I said, I've discussed them with uh, your administration last week. They're aware of these issues, and they're going to be addressing them uh, after we complete the audit. One of the things that did jump up was the amount of taxes receivable at December 31st. That's mainly. Uh, due to the uh, supplementary taxation billings that was done at the end of the year but we always like to see taxes receivable monitor on an ongoing basis and make sure collection is happening to make sure you have a low amount of taxes receivable outstanding compared to your total revenue same with outstanding user fees receivables there was an increase this past year and just to remind administration to keep following that up because as you collect that your cash flow position increase. Uh, the third point, reserve funds and restricted assets. You technically have too much restricted assets compared to your reserve funds. Uh, those funds should be moved over to your, uh, your operating bank account. Uh, you're both operating in your restricted or your reserve fund bank accounts are in a healthy cash position, 
we recommend that you maybe invest some of those extra dollars in higher earning interest up to this point i guess last year it was like oh interest rates not too good now it's actually favorable for investing purposes so my understanding is that administration is going to review that and then we have some recommendations from the previous year which administration is going to follow up with uh, some on claim hst rebates we believe there's some outstanding that can be claimed back which will increase the cash flow for the municipality and then there was just uh, one hiccup and payroll testing two years ago which administration address we always like to bring up recommendations from the previous year just to let council know how a management uh, has addressed them in 2022 so that is uh, my financial report and thank you very much for having me uh, one thing I did speak with your former CAO in that option I'm willing to uh, offer is kind of a financial I'll say accounting 101 course or training seminar that we could do in camera that if you ever want to spend more time and dive into the financial statements and uh, I'm prepared to offer that services for you at no cost excellent so. thank you thank you for that for sure certainly uh, more education for us is always best yes um, and, and it reminded me when you were going through um, one of the other thoughts I had was uh, how much uh, improving our assets improves our financial position too, right? So as we continue to think about uh, those bigger projects and those asset improvements, how, how much uh, it makes and then how much work Tyler does on asset management for us. So thank you for that. Thank you for that. Yeah. And thank you very much for having me tonight. And I hopefully I'll be back here next year at this almost same, hopefully the weather is not as Beautiful it is outside, but you know, same time and place for next year. Very good. So, well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Pollock. Thanks for being here tonight. Okay, so moving along on our agenda, we'll move to item 6A. Action requests, uh, proposed council meeting dates. Uh, Clerk LeBron, you want to kick yep. us off? Yes, thank you, Mayor Broad. Um, the action request before you today is uh, a request from administrative uh, administration to uh, make some revisions to the council calendar. Um, so before you, you'll see uh, a range of dates um, as well as the types of meetings that we're looking to schedule. So there's a special meeting we'd like to schedule on May the 29th. Uh, it's not written in the report, but it would be a six o'clock start. Uh, that would be a special meeting in council and that would be a, a closed session or an in-camera meeting. Uh, Wednesday the 31st would be a committee of the whole. Monday, June 19th would be our regular council meeting. The 26th meeting would be canceled uh, and our regular and the meetings that were scheduled for July and August remain the same. So that's our request before you today and we're hoping uh, to get some direction from you if some of these dates work or um, if we need to make a change, we can do that. Yeah, for myself, I'm supportive. I know we wanted to get the in-camera session going and the Committee of the Whole going. I had kind of requested that week of the June 26th we make a change there. I've been invited to lots of uh, graduations all throughout that week and I'd, I'd really like to attend um, and with uh, uh, in in the works of a CEO, hiring a CEO and uh, give us some time here in June to get that to get that done and uh, and ongoing. So, any comments or questions from the uh, council, Councilor uh, Smith? Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor Broad. Are all the meetings? They're all night meetings, like all six p.m. Six p.m. Okay. start. Everything that was in there, I was fine with. It's, Perfect. I had no conflicts. I'm, I'm okay. okay. Great. All right. Everybody looks like there's not in their heads, they're good. So I have a motion that council approve the amended council meeting dates as presented tonight. Moved by Councillor Vino, seconded by Councillor Ward. All in favor? Thank you very much. Okay. Bylaws under 7A, uh, 2023 39 tile drain loan. Clerk LeBron. Yes, thank you, Mayor Broad. And through you, on February 13th, Council approved a tile drain loan application uh, from Michael Farlinger. So the next step in this process is for Council to approve the tile drain loan. Uh, you'll see the rate bylaw attached to the report. So the amount they're requesting to borrow is $23,700. 
the landowners would be eligible for up to 70% of this, uh, the value of the trial drain work, and it has a 10-year term um, with annual payments and the uh, bylaws attached for your approval. Questions or comments? Councillor Ward? Are we collecting interest on this? Yes, and I believe that um, the bylaw, what will happen is the, the rating bylaw will go to, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, will go to OMAFRA and they'll approve the, the rate and get back to us on exactly what that is, but there will be interest on it. Okay, yeah. thank you. I, I think we're just, we're waiting for that rate, the exact interest Right, rate. I guess the part for us is we're administering, so we're taking on that cost to administer. Cor is, yeah. Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. Councillor Smith? Yeah, I was, I was just going to mention, I think it's 6%. Is, I don't, I don't, oh. yeah, thumbs up in the back. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah it, it doesn't, it, I don't think it changes, it's, it's, it's 6, it's been 6, it's a set yeah, it's a set amount, 6%. We okay. collect that interest. Not OMAFRA, correct? That's our interest that we charge? Yeah. Oh, good. Um, we just do we collect money. the interest or would it be OMAFRA? Uh, through the chair to uh, Councillor Smith, yes, the interest rate is 6% simple interest. And what happens is the municipality collects it and it is sent to OMAFRA every year. We do not retain the interest. Mm -hmm. So our piece is the collection piece that we have. Okay, any other questions or comments? Okay, I have a motion on the bylaw 2023-39 being a bylaw to impose special annual drainage rates upon land in respect of which money is borrowed under the Tile Drainage Act, be read and passed in open council, signed and sealed. Motion by Councillor Smith, seconded by Councillor Ward. All in favor, carried. Thank you very much. 7B, 2023 40, drainage inspector appointment. Clerk LeBron. Yes, thank you, Mayor Broad. And through you, this is a, a simple bylaw before you tonight to appoint Chris St. Thomas as our tile drainage inspector for uh, South Dundas. Uh, this is just to make it official. Chris is uh, already completing um, our inspections and our tile drain work. So this is just a bylaw to make it official. Questions, comments? So I have a motion on the bylaw 2023-40, being a bylaw to appoint Chris St. Thomas as the South Dundas Tile Drain Inspector, be read and passed in open council, signed and sealed. So motion by Councillor Ward, seconded by Councillor Vino. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Continuing with uh, Clerk LeBron under 7C, Animal Control Agreement. Yes, thank you, Mayor Broad. Uh, the request before you tonight is uh, a, an amendment to an existing animal control agreement for our canine control officer, Kevin Castleman. Uh, this, is, this was an agreement uh, between four municipalities, uh, South Dundas, North Dundas, South Stormont, North Stormont, um, and it requires renewal. The group met a few weeks ago and it was determined that an update to the agreement was required because of increase of operational costs and supply costs. So we are uh, making a small amendment to Schedule A. However, uh, just so Council is aware that there is a long-term plan expected to be brought back to Council in the fall to plan for 2024 and beyond. So uh, the agreement uh, before you today will bring us until that point. Um, and the, the biggest um, change to this agreement is the rate of pay and the mileage. Um, that's the, the change before you today for the agreement. Great. Certainly pleased to see that we uh, partner with other municipalities in this area and have ideas and, and have meetings on it so that we can bring forward the best costs and service to our, to our residents. Any questions or uh, comments? I'm glad to hear that uh, we'll have a, like a renewal refresh for 2024 as well. So that's good. Okay. Uh, motion that bylaw 2023 being a bylaw to amend the animal control agreement schedule A under bylaw 2019-20 with the townships of North Stormont, South Stormont, North Dundas, and Kevin Kasman be read in open council, signed and sealed. Motion by Councillor Vino, seconded by Councillor Ward. 
All in favor? Carried. Okay. Under 7D, 2023 42, Morrisburg BIA member appointment, Clerk LeBron. Yes, thank you, Mayor Broad. I'm um, speaking on behalf of uh, Rob Hunter. He was unable to attend tonight. Um, so the Morrisburg Business Improvement Area had their general uh, annual general meeting, and Arla Vino, James Arsenault, and Tracy Vino were all nominated, uh, and each of them accepted their nominations uh, to the BIA board. So the, we have received documentation of their eligibility and, and it has been provided to, to us. Uh, so the, the bylaw before you tonight is to appoint these three members uh, to the BIA and to note that there's still one more vacant position. Good, glad to see uh, folks stepping up, part of our committees. Any questions, comments? <coughs> so I have a motion on the bylaw 2023-42 being a bylaw to appoint Arla Vino James Arsenault and Tracy Vino to the Morrisburg Business Improvement Area Board be read and passed in open council, signed and sealed by Councillor Ward, seconded by Councillor Smith. All in favor? Carried. And thank you to Arla, James, and Tracy for volunteering. Uh, 7D, we'll move to uh, Julie Stewart, 2023-43 Williamsburg Sewer Rates. So as follow-up from uh, a previous meeting, we just wanted to confirm information um, on those rates. Thank you. Thanks, Julie, for joining Thanks, us. Thank you, Mayor Broad. Uh, yes, so um, it is the Williamsburg sewer. Uh, they are flat rate. Um, we have in included the uh, water wastewater study to provide some background on the revenue expenditures and capital requirements. Um, in this study, it was a 2% rate that was used for the Williamsburg um, sewer. However, we did use 4% uh, based on the budget. So options for this is that we could um, do nothing, uh, which would result in a revenue deficit of $2,065. Um, we could increase the Williamsburg sewer levy by 2%, which was demonstrated in the uh, water wastewater study, or uh, increase it by the 4%, which was uh, included in the budget that was passed. Excellent. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Uh, and as we just saw in our financial statements, if we collected the 4%, the, the excess would go to the reserves to water and wastewater, Yes. which is the whole intent of our water and wastewater uh, study we had completed. Uh, right. Any other questions, uh, comments, or comments, I guess, on our direction? <laughs> Councillor Ward. Thanks, Mayor, so I guess I have a few comments. I think my main concern and, and the reason why I brought this forward is the study's already outdated, right? So it's 2%, it's calling for 2%, we need 4%. If we keep with 2%, we're in a deficit. So I think maybe in the future moving forward, we might need to, to take a look at that to make sure it's relevant, the study. I, and I, I did have a good discussion with Mr. Mason and I appreciate him giving me his time there on Friday at, um, so I could better understand what was going on. So I think we might be on the same page that you know tomorrow our financial could be different, right? Uh, based on inflation and whatever's going on. Sure. My main concern too, and I will bring this back up when we look at water and sewer in the future, is that this study is suggesting we make one pot for sewer, whereas currently there's three separate capital reserves. And the reason why I have a problem with it is because each individual township pays a different rate for water or wastewater, excuse me. So. You know, Morrisburg's paying 75%, Iroquois paying 100 and then Williamsburg is paying a flat rate. A flat rate. Yeah. So I just want to make sure when we address the rate moving forward that it's, it's equitable. Like it's, you know, the, based on what each user is using in the system with regards to asset replacement and whatnot. Um, but that's a discussion for a different day. So I do appreciate staff answering my questions and, and bringing this back uh, so that I could better understand that. So those are my only comments. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? No, but I think uh, Councilor Ward uh, makes some good points. So uh, to uh, have as much information going to our next budget meetings and more information on that and, and ideas, and that's something that we can uh, definitely uh, think about through the summertime into the fall on, on proposals on those exact items, which, which direction we'd like to, like to take on those. Okay. Uh, with that, I have a uh, bylaw number 2023 being a bylaw to impose a sewer rate in Williamsburg be read and passed and open council signed and sealed. 
That's a Councillor Ward, seconded by Councillor Vino. All in favor? Uh, thank you very much. Thank Thanks, you. Julie. Okay, number eight. Uh, boards and committees. Um, I do know that the uh, Iroquois waterfront meeting uh, was last week and Deputy uh, Mayor St. Pierre uh, was not able to attend to another uh, municipal business. Uh, and he's not here, so to get him an update, but I believe there was a Morrisburg waterfront uh, meeting. Uh, Councillor Vino, any, any specific updates or anything you want to share just from that meeting? Yeah, um, so we had a very productive meeting. Uh, one of the things that we did discuss, so we um, started uh, more planning for our, uh, um, I guess, grand opening of the new park, uh, the walkways and the viewing um, platform. So there, we have begun scheduling or planning that. We're hoping that council will be um, there to, to join us. I think we're getting uh, some big scissors and some ribbon for you to cut. So sure, hopefully yeah. you'll be there to join us. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the other thing uh, that we talked about was maybe we're looking into doing some uh, movie in the park nights mm -hmm. for the youth down at use, utilizing the amphitheater because uh, we it's been a little bit underutilized. So we've been trying to come up with some ideas to, to start using the amphitheater a little bit more. Um, we're also discussing uh, what the wildflowers. So Iroquois, water, or Waterfront Committee in Iroquois, as you guys may or may not know, they're talking about uh, planting wildflowers to kind of deter geese and to stop mowing so much grass. Um, we are thinking about that for the Morseburg Waterfront. The idea right now is potentially from Earl Baker Park to the east over towards the dog park, maybe making a section through the middle of that um, so some low wildfires because we don't want to interrupt anybody's view, you know, on Park Street or whatever. So I guess the idea was to get council's kind of just general blessing to even just go out for pricing and whatnot on that. If, if anybody has any outright negative ideas about that, then we just wouldn't. But if everybody's all right with it, we'll go out for pricing. And we have a meeting scheduled, a special meeting on uh, Monday evening where we're going to meet uh, late afternoon, I guess. We're going to meet down at the dockside and walk the waterfront and just kind of come up with some ideas for lighting and uh, um, more planting for the watershed and whatnot. So I have the date in my phone. If, if any of you would like to join us Monday night, that's where we'll be. We'll be walking the waterfront. So outside of that, uh, I guess just if anybody completely against wildflowers, are we okay to go ahead? <coughs> Excuse me. Pricing. Sorry about that. I, uh, I do have two comments. One is... Okay. Um, we are going to see uh, in the consent agenda the motion to remove the basketball nets. Yes. Now, did, I, I was at the original meeting. Did they discuss it again, or do you want to just share? Uh, we didn't discuss detail? that okay. in detail at the last okay. meeting, but uh, I do have the background on it from here, but sure. I guess we'll wait for the consent agenda for that one. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then secondly, yeah, so I, I was also at the meeting when we discussed the geese. Certainly yeah. uh, more flowers, more interruptions to geese, geese patterns. Uh, it's helpful. So, yeah. I, yeah, I'm supportive to doing things that are going to help prevent the geese. We get feedback a lot about the droppings on the, on the walkways. Mm -hmm. So more of those type of things we can do uh, yeah. to uh, move our geese in other directions. I think that's a benefit. So for sure, I would go ahead and get, get some plans going and see what we can do and see what, see what things would cost, et cetera. So, yeah. Councillor Ward? Thank you, Mayor. So just on that topic, I think, you know, I same avenue as you, I support you know, getting rid of the geese. Obviously they create quite a mess, not only on the pathways, but also on the splash pad in Earl Baker Park. It's, they yeah. make a mess. Um, one thing I just wanted to mention is that sometimes wildflower plant plantings, especially along shorelines, like uh, rehabilitation of the shoreline, you can get it funded through conservation authorities in the province. So mm -hmm. it may be worthwhile looking into that, or I can maybe find some information and share it with you. Yep. Um, but yeah, just that way, maybe it'll help reduce your overhead on that. Absolutely, yeah. Excellent. Cool. We have an ad, Councillor Smith, on yeah. that? Very good. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Excellent. And uh, those were all the Board of Committee meetings we had in the last two weeks. Uh, lots going on between uh, now and our next meeting. I think we have most of our committees are meeting again, uh, county meeting and uh, strategic planning meeting for the counties as well for Deputy Mayor St. Pierre and I on Thursday. So there'll probably be a lot more updates uh, next, at our next meeting on uh, committees. Uh, consent agenda under nine, <coughs> we had uh, eight items um, to accept the minutes of the Morseburg BIA, the minutes of the Erica Waterfront and Morseburg Waterfront, uh, resolution for the municipal insurance cost from Municipality of Huron Shores, 
uh, resolution for the Ontario Public School Boards, submitted by Township of South Glengarry. Uh, resolution Bill 23, More Homes Faster, uh, United Counties of SDNG, and a res resolution for the Rural Education Funding in the United Counties. Uh, so, I have two things. Uh, in that, uh, I have a motion that all the items under general consent agenda be adopted as presented. Councillor Ward, seconded by Councillor Vino. All in favor? Carry. And then within that, uh, the minutes of the Morrisburg Waterfront, uh, there was a request that uh, they resolve that council direct staff to complete the removal of the two basketball nets uh, and any cost of removal, including staff time, uh, allocated to the recreation budget. Uh, Cole, maybe you just want to make a quick comment on that. Yeah, so oh, I have it in front of me, actually, if you'd like, I can just read yeah, it for sure. the viewers. Okay. So yeah. the background, so the... The request that was made by the Morrisburg Waterfront Committee is as follows. It's uh, basketball nets are currently located in the middle parking lot typically used by the baseball park users. The nets are reaching the end of their lifespan and are not in the ideal location. Many have already been hit by cars and bent, um, damaged in other ways. The committee supports basketball and a new multi-use pad within the park as outlined with the ma within the master plan. However, these nets are currently getting limited usage and causing parking issues at the park and the committee feels that it can be a step forward, step towards getting new nets. Um, they recommend that uh, we direct staff to remove the nets. So um, I think in theory, I support this. I did go down and look at them. I drive, that's my drive to work every morning I do, and home. I do see the basketball nets get used, which I really enjoy seeing, except the, the nets themselves are in bad shape, but as is the asphalt and, you know, slips, trips, falls, all that kind of stuff, the, the municipality is liable for that. Um, that's, so, so I would support removal of these because I think to rehabilitate them is just a cost that is unrealistic. Um, but in saying that, I would like to expedite our work or on a multi-use pad down there that we could use for um, the outdoor rink in the winter, basketball, whatever the case may be. Um, because again, I see I see the nets getting used, and I, I don't like taking away recreation. Um, but those nets are, I mean, they're in yeah. disrepair, serious disrepair. Without a, without another plan today, I think our best move is to take those nets down to use that for a parking lot, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, let's work yes. over the into the next budget session to see uh, what we can do uh, throughout our municipalities for basketball nets. Because I know basketball is a growing sport and there's a South End has a league going mm -hmm. that Derek Kasselman runs um, uh, through the schools and he's interested in some outdoor uh, free play areas. So we, yeah. so yeah, so for, for sure, let's uh, go figure that out where, where we can get uh, nets appropriately placed that can be, can be yeah. used. Okay, any questions for uh, Councillor Vino? All right, uh, so as stated, the motion was to remove the basketball nets at the Morrisburg uh, Ball Diamond is really where they're parking lot for the Ball Diamond. Motion by Councillor Ward, seconded by Councillor Vino. All in favor? Carried. Okay. Um, well, that was 10, actually. So we are in notice of motions. Any notices of motions? Councillor Smith. I'd like to, at some point in time, uh, talk about the 5% uh, Parks and Recreation payment in lieu that gets imposed on any new lots that are created. Um, perhaps once we get our new CAO in place, hopefully that's sooner rather than later, um, we can get started on this, looking at this. Okay. So for uh, Clerk LeBrun, we'll add that to our uh, for a future action item to probably education as our first piece and then uh, go from there on the... Um, yeah, I'm just looking specifically what the 5%, I'm just, I just missed that part. So anytime that we're severing lots off. Oh, severing. Yes, okay. and severing lots I off. You. And I think the issue for some folks why it's a topic is depending on the cost of the lot. Yes. <laughs> it varies because it's a set, it's a, five, it's a percentage rate versus there's no There's rate. no maximum on it. No maximum on it, so. Okay. Thanks, Councilor Smith. Any others? No. Okay, ratification bylaw under 12A, uh, a bylaw 202344, being a bylaw to adopt, confirm, ratify matters dealt with the resolution, be read and passed in open council, signed and sealed. Moved by Councilor Ward, seconded by <coughs> Councilor Smith. All in favor? Carried. 
All right, adjournment. Uh, motion that we adjourn to call the chair. Councillor Ward, Councillor Smith, all in favor? Okay, as we conclude our council meeting with the team and staff team for May 23rd, I'd like to say thanks to everybody and the whole team, uh, those that worked on the, on the agenda and for uh, our delegation tonight, uh, Jamie Pollock. Uh, and thank you uh, for all the work that Treasury has done on that. Uh, special thanks to all our folks in Parks, Recreation, Fire Service, Water, Wastewater, Bylaw, Transportation, Administration. Thank you. Um, so thanks for those that were in attendance tonight and those that viewed us as a uh, live stream or as a recording. Just a reminder, our next meeting is a closed meeting in camera, Monday, May 29th. We have a committee of the whole meeting uh, that will be live on Wednesday, May 31st. And our regular council meeting is uh, next Monday, uh, June 19th. So for all those uh, in South Dundas, certainly uh, proud to represent you and uh, have a good night.